Good morning, everyone. This is the Small Business Committee. My name is Teresa Lohr. I'm a, a councilwoman from the second district at large and the chairman of the committee. And to my left is... Heather Hall, first district in district councilwoman and vice chair of the Small Business Committee. Welcome. And thank you all for coming today. We have just the two of us because everybody else is kind of scattered with mostly KCI uh, work today. So since we aren't voting on anything, we are, um, we're going to go ahead. We don't need a quorum for what we're going to do today. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Heather and let her kind of take it from here on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Lohr and Chairman of the, of the committee. You know, this is one of, uh, well, this is my favorite committee because we get to talk about the things that make Kansas City great, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and jobs. This is the, the heartbeat of the kinds of things we want to have so our people in our city um, are successful and want to stay living in Kansas City. So thank you for joining us, whether you're here in the audience or on television. We appreciate your um, attention to this. Everything we're going to talk about today will be on our website, so if you want to refer to it later, please go to Channel 2 or kcmo.gov and we will get all this information to you. The first item on the agenda is Tech Week. Tech Week is coming up and we are so grateful to have Drew Solomon with us today to present on Tech Week, what it means for Kansas City. It is coming up September 11 to 15 and I'm going to just turn it over to Drew for his wonderful presentations. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, uh, as you did refer to, Tech Week is uh, one week away. Uh, this is our third year here in Kansas City, so we actually started with this in uh, 2015. And so just a, a quick high-level overview, it's about 6,500 attendees. Uh, it's a five-day conference, about 40 different activations uh, and different uh, sessions during the week. Um, it's a Monday through Friday, uh, Monday through Friday format. Uh, this year it is September 11th through 15th. A uh, quick little backstory, if you will, about Tech Week. Uh, Decided to locate here in Kansas City in 2015 uh, after the civic community got together along with the city uh, and the Missouri Technology Corporation and created the Launch Casey Grant Competition. We were actually looking for a conference to partner with to help kind of bolster that platform and bring some national speakers in and some notoriety. Uh, we're fortunate to find a great partner in Tech Week. They not only provide financial support uh, to the grant competition in the way of grant funding for some of those winning companies, but they also provide not only the, uh, the long-term commitment here with regard to the speaker's schedule uh, and all the venue arrangements for what we do here in Kansas City. So historically, we've seen speakers uh, such as Jim McKelvey, who is the co-founder of Square, Jonathan Bedeen, who started Tinder, um, Jeff Hoffman, who founded Priceline.com, uh, several great speakers this year. Uh, actually our keynote speaker because some of our some of our key subjects this year are around issues of diversity and technology uh, women-led enterprise and what that means for technology we're very fortunate to have Catherine Menchu who's the CEO of the muse uh, which is a career platform that's got about 30 million users very notable uh, been featured in uh, Forbes Huffington Post and several other organizational magazines uh, around technology and business Catherine's going to be joining us talking about uh, what it means for the millennial generation to actually career uh, career enhance and career develop and what it means to uh, to move forward in kind of this new technological age and so to supplement uh, Catherine's keynote we've actually got about 46 other speakers that are coming in in various uh, various capacities including one of the principal architects for Microsoft uh, and so what I might do actually if I could actually go through the website uh, as you can see we've got about six days until Tech Week starts uh, you can see a litany of of speakers we have from several organizations, both national and local. Um, a couple of uh, key things to kind of note uh, with regard to the schedule. This year, it is something, in the first two years, we did this at Union Station. We really tried to condense our um, footprint and really, for the community, bring everyone together. One of the things that we learned was that's a really great way to get density. Um, it's maybe not sometimes the most um, most forward-thinking way to showcase your community. And so one of the things we thought we would do this year is actually get out and about and move some locations around uh, and really kind of embrace the broader, the broader vision, if you will, and geography that is Kansas City. And so starting on Monday, for example, um, we've got an entire track dedicated to blockchain learning. And so if you know anything about blockchain, uh, huge, huge opportunity in the technology space. Um, very fortunate to have an entire afternoon of content there. That's going to take place at the Sprint Accelerator. Um, we've also got the Pure Pitch Rally, which this is going to be fun. This is an on-the-spot 
pitch competition that Finn Raleigh and Associates helped us put together, as well as several sponsors. That's going to take place at Helix, Helix Architecture uh, downtown in the crossroads. We then have a kickoff party on Monday evening at the Boulevard Beer Hall. We're very fortunate to have corporate partners like Boulevard. They're actually shutting that public space down for the evening so that we can have, a, uh, we can have our Tech Week kickoff party there that, that evening as well. Uh, Tuesday, we're actually moving, we're doing an entire day at Cerner's uh, headquarters uh, talking about building inclusive tech communities. Uh, we've also got um, a panel at 1740 Paseo at the Full Employment Council offices talking about diversity and technology that day as well. And so what you'll see with this schedule, uh, and if you download the mobile app or take a look at the website, you'll be able to see that we're all over the city in various locations, which is a really big change uh, than what we kind of had the first two years. Um, you can see we've got um, VML hosting an official happy hour. Um, so many different, I mean, honestly, we have like 40, 50 different activations. Um, something really to point out that's interesting, Wednesday afternoon at the Travoy, we've got the future of the animal, animal health corridor along with puppies and tech. So if you, like, if you like to come and visit animals from like the Casey Pet Project who may need a home and also want to hear about animal health and technology, this is a great, it's a great place to do that. Uh, we've got smart and connected infrastructure. We've got uh, an evening event that Hush Blackwell has put together at the J. Rieger Distillery down in the East Bottom. So we continue to uh, continue to find new and interesting places in the city to do this. And then Thursday, you will see a lot of our feature content. That's actually going to take place at PlexPod, which is down at 39th and Main, the old uh, Westport Middle School. Uh, we're actually going to take that uh, to kind of take that space over, if you will, for the entire day. And we've got about 40 sessions. Um, You'll see chief executive officers from Kauffman Foundation, Spring Venture Group, um, several other major organizations like, like we saw on the front page that will be there speaking as well. Um, and then Friday morning, we come back downtown to the gallery space. And actually, what's really exciting for a lot of people, we actually do the demo day and the pitches for the Launch KC finalists. And so there are 20 companies. Uh, vying for that $500,000 in grant money that we give away as a part of that competition. That's going to take, um, take place in the morning, uh, right after Catherine Menchu's keynote, which is going to be at 8.30. And so um, one of the other things that's really interesting this year as well is we've moved to an evening awards format. And so Friday evening at the Grand Hall at the Kansas City Power and Light Apartments, we're actually going to do an evening awards program where we, where we will announce the Launch KC grant winners. And we also have three um, kind of city awards that Tech Week has put together. One is the Venture Capital Deal of the Year. The other is a Startup of the Year. And then the third one is kind of a, what, what they like to call a trailblazer in technology. And so this is somebody who's really maybe uh, for the last 10 or 20 years been really significant in helping this community get to where we kind of are today with this. And so all those awards and that award presentation will be Friday evening at the Grand Hall. Um, and so a week full of activities, uh, lots of things. We expect to probably meet, if not exceed, our uh, attendance from last year. Like I said, this is the third year that we've been doing this. And just continue, continue to see great civic support. Uh, amazing sponsors like Hush Blackwell, Kansas City Power and Light, Missouri Technology Corporation, the City of Kansas City. Honestly, we really, really couldn't do a lot of this without the City of Kansas City. The last couple of years, um, the municipal support that's been given to this program to help really seed and start this, as well as just the, the connection base, has been invaluable. So the members of the council, members of the administration here have been beyond supportive. Uh, Rick sitting over here, Rick's been incredibly helpful, as well as we've put this together. And really, the, the reason why we do this is, is really twofold. Uh, it, one, it's to kind of take a minute and realize a lot of the success and gains that we've seen in this market in Kansas City. It's really easy sometimes as we all move fast and we talk about airports and streetcars and, and all these things, we forget that you know, there's organizations that are making major strides, you know, like a Spring Venture Group or the Nerdery uh, or, or several other organizations that are expanding employment, they're growing this market, and they have great stories to tell. And you couple that with some great national speakers, and all of a sudden, this creates a really vibrant, attractive environment for Kansas City. And so that's what we want to try to do is draw, draw external attention to our market and at the same time celebrate all the great things internally that we're doing. And so that's, that's Tech Week in a nutshell. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions, provide any, uh, any detail that, that you, may, you may want. Great. 
Well, I just wanted to, a couple of things to reiterate. We will have this schedule up on our website, uh, and I know that Councilwoman Laura and I will put it up on our personal pages, and we right. can have that up on our social media. I um, have downloaded the Tech Week app, so everybody go download that. It's super easy. It's free. It took two seconds. And um, make sure you check out the schedule and all the different kinds of things. Tech Week is really um, a very important opportunity because people don't always know that the tech that they use, how important it is for their everyday life and what the companies in Kansas City are doing to make their lives better. So um, go make sure you, you do do that. Uh, I guess I wanted one question, and that is the past winners of these uh, awards. I think um, the recipients of the, the, the thousand, didn't they start out at $10,000 each? 50000 So, So this year, that's actually a, a great a great point to bring up really quick. So we've had two cohorts or two years worth of yes, grant winners that's right. uh, so far. So there's um, 20 companies that we've awarded $1 million in total. They've that's all right. received $50,000 grants. Those companies uh, have raised cumulatively in their first two years over $13 million, created over $5 million in revenue and created over 50 new jobs as a part of uh, as a part of that program and 17 of the 20 companies are actually still active open and viable in the market here in Kansas City and so from a portfolio point of view that's incredibly successful and that's a really big kind of badge of honor uh, not only for the program but for Kansas City as, as a market this year we're doing the $50,000 grants but we are also doing a $100,000 grand prize so one of these companies is going to walk away with a $100,000 grant. And what's really interesting with that is it's non-dilutive. We don't take any equity. This is a true civic nonprofit endeavor. And so this money is actually used to inject into these businesses to help them grow and to really spur that, uh, kind of spur that environment and that ecosystem opportunity that we want to do. One thing I'd love to see, and I'm sure you've already done this, but um, for our, for our um, um, edification is you know, where are they today? Like you said, you've given us these numbers that show collectively how they've all done. But it would also be nice for us, maybe even on our committee, to have some of them come and tell us why this was so successful to them and how it, how it helped give them the leg up to continue to be as successful so they didn't shut their doors. Because many times a startup that's what happens. They have a great idea, but they just can't go past those X amount of years. And when you have these kinds of opportunities, you're giving them something enormous, but it then, of course, helps the entire city. Absolutely. So would, would, love love to to have, would love to have some of those folks come in and provide just some insights into their business. And if, if I may, just for, for the committee, um, it would actually be a really interesting storytelling exercise for them to actually come in and talk about their business and, mm -hmm. and explain some of the things that they're trying to do uh, in their own organizations. We'd love that. So. That would be great. That would be great, Drew. So why don't we coordinate on that and see if we can't get that set up. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much, Drew. We're looking forward to Tech Week, as always. So um, it. <laughs> we'll be in touch. Thank you. Oh, are, there any, are there questions from the oh. audience? Are there any questions or comments from the uh, public? Rick, did you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, it's just covered a big it week, pretty good. Big week highlighting all the activity in Kansas City. So, Great. Drew's done a tremendous job and. Um, MTC, we're just, I don't know, you want to talk about state funding and what the future of that looks like, or is that another conversation? I think the state of Missouri is doing all it can do to be fiscally responsible, and I think I would just hope that we continue to value that program and the funding we provide for that. That's okay, a, is great. That a good, that's a good night. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Um, did you? I'm sorry. We're on to um, our second additional business is Project United Knowledge. Uh, Quest Moffat and uh, Rebecca Dove. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Well, again, thank you for having us here this morning and we're very excited and pleased to be here and I'm gonna go over the background story of Product and United Knowledge. So about three years ago, Quest and I started this organization to help um, entrepreneurs create their technological businesses. We primarily focus on women in underserved communities because we know that's a, a big um, need right there.
So currently today, looking at, at this, the stats, is that women on organizations grow five times faster. Um, we definitely know that women have a great acumen and definitely um, have a great skill set. And then also, if you can see since 2007, that firms owned by people of color are growing at a, a sounding rate as well. And then the Latino um, individuals are increasing our GDP by $2.1 um, trillion. But a lot of organizations aren't focusing on women in underserved communities. But as you can see, that having diversity and entrepreneurship can really change our community, and that's why we exist, is to really help women in underserved communities, um, specifically my minorities, when you say under underserved. And these contributions can greatly make a change throughout the community. Um, so that's where we come in. So when we first started, we focused on technology products and um, helping build their, their tools. But currently today, we're focusing on educating them because as different entrepreneurs who come from underserved backgrounds, um, we noticed that they didn't have the knowledge to build a team or to raise, raise funds. And even though there's great numbers out there, you saw that over 126% of minority and women-owned companies are growing. But within Kansas City alone, the companies that we have worked with so far have struggled to go beyond building their, their products. And that's where Product UK comes in. So just the how it, we frame it as we're a startup studio, and that is where we provide education programs, also technology programs, in order to help them um, develop their com companies even better. And our education program is called CoStarters. CoStarters started in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They are a world-renowned program. They also have their program in New Zealand, uh, Florida, Tennessee, like I said, Ohio, and about 13 other cities th throughout the nation. Um, our program co-starters focuses on idea validation and providing more resources uh, throughout the underserved community. And we're, again, placing a high emphasis on women in underserved communities, but of course, we uh, serve everyone, everyone as well. And this is just a visual to demonstrate how we're different from the other organizations throughout the, the nation. Incubators spend approximately weeks to a few months to assist you. Accelerators spend a year or less. But our venture builder, which is what we are, we spend at least a year or more with these companies. So the great part is when the companies are finished with CoStar, which is only three months, they can apply for other services um, to assist them. And we do hope that it, more companies will be able to do the Tech Week or Launch KC programs. And we also, the Digital Sandbox programs and KC Source Link. <coughs> so we're creating this ecosystem to not only help them edu educate the companies, but also bridge that gap so they can go into other, other programs with our, our organization. So uh, basically the vision of Project United Knowledge is to make Kansas City the most inclusive city in the entrepreneurial ecosystem of the United States. It's one thing to be the fastest growing entrepreneurial city in the nation, which is what we've been coined as, but that leaves out all of the diversity and the entrepreneurship, which is very important, and we all know that. Um, our local mission, but our global mission is to make sure that basically everyone that's in entrepreneurship has a level playing field, so as to provide members and to provide members of underserved communities with the education, support, and resources that they need to achieve entrepreneurial success and validate their business ideas. Um, as Rebecca has mentioned, we've basically, over the last five years of being in the startup world, we have seen over, we'll say, 12 incubators, accelerators, and co-working spaces be created the downside to it is they're created mainly here in downtown, which is not a problem, which is where our startup ecosystem is. But as soon as you expand out to South Kansas City, the east side of Kansas City, the Paseo Corridor, the Truce Corridor, Prospect, Kansas City, Kansas, Wyandotte, Kansas, there is nothing. Um, the, uh, the eco space is gone. Um, and as Rebecca has mentioned, we basically provide a three-month and nine-month education program but where we focus and where we make ourselves different is, my background is I'm a software architect engineer. Rebecca is in the education space and product development world. We have access to a, over 150 software engineers, developers, product developers, service developers. We have access to marketing creation geniuses from animation, 3D animation, 2D animation, 
name a service, we have access to it that we could literally provide you either at free or reduced, which is now how we're completely different. So Techstars is our largest um, startup um, accelerator in town. $120,000, three month program, 6% of your company. That's great. The only downside to this program is they provide you access to a CTO like myself. Many CTOs do not program anymore. So when you need to actually create a mobile application, I give you 120 grand, I'm gonna rely on you to go back out into the community and trust that you can find these individuals to execute this for you. Our stance is we'll provide that team for you. We'll make sure that it actually gets done and you delivered a product to market that your investors wanna invest more money into and that the community wants to get behind. We help you through our education program, identify your actual business, validate the idea, find out who your specific customers are and what do these customers actually want. How much is this gonna cost? What is the financial plan gonna be? And then we help you along the way with all the research and the resources of hooking you up with the <clears throat> KC source link or hooking you up with the BizCare unit, hooking you up the Mid-America Continent Library or the KC Missouri Library so you can have access to all of their resources such as their databases, we have their researchers that will actually help you research your business idea out to validate it just that much faster. Um, the specialty about our nine month program is now that's where we come into effect. You get access to me. Um, our three month program, you don't have access to people like me. You're validating your idea. Nine months later, free services come down the pipeline. We help you. Everyone gets a mentor that they meet with every two weeks um, to modify and shift the plan. And that's a radically different idea than just meeting your mentor on a monthly basis. Stuff changes so fast in a startup world and to have someone there that's done it, that's been there, just makes you that much more confident when going through the process to make that rapid change of a decision. We offer community micro programs um, after we were funded, sponsored um, with 15 grand from the Kauffman Foundation to put on community-based courses. So everyone that can't just get through our three month and our nine month program, we're offering off completely free educational courses. We have a course called Slanguage, and that's basically to introduce you into every single term, not only of the startup community, the financial community, the banking space, and the investment community. As a founder, all of us in this room are very um, ignorant to a lot of the terms that investors are using from venture capitalists to angel investors. And then if you wanna go through the typical route of a bank, that's a whole different process than an angel and a VC. So we aim to teach you all of that knowledge just so you can understand. We have another class that hooks you up with all of the resources in Kansas City. So we all know KC SourceLink, but who are the actual leaders at KC SourceLink and the gatekeepers that you actually need to speak with on the 150 odd resources throughout our city? So we tell you all of them. This is just a uh, small picture of our team. Got some fun advisors, and like I said, software engineers, city people. Um, Wayne is a really good guy. We all know Mr. Usher over here and Dr. Mozella Dyer. This is the rest of our team, um, some of it, um, and there's a lot more of us. And so far to date, we've been around for three years. We've been in business officially for one year. We've helped out 18 companies. Um, companies, everything from financial technology, artificial intelligence, agriculture technology. We've helped out ed tech companies. We have companies in the legal space, a catering company, a painting company, a lawn mowing company. We've touched everything across the board. So we're not just tech. Um, we've helped raise an additional $1.5 million for these companies. A majority of them are women. A majority of them are brown. So to do a million and a half dollars for a majority of the companies across the board, there is a, a fact that we learned from Techstars that there are less than 10 black and or Latino individuals that have actually raised more than a half a million dollars in the United States. So last year, there was $46.3 billion invested in the startup VC space. There's the answer. So when we talk about diversity and inclusion, specifically also here in Kansas City, I only know of one funded black business in Kansas City, and that's Shot Tracker with Davion Ross. I can name 60 others that don't look like me that we know of. And that's why the real reason why we exist. And uh, that's basically it. Um, these are some of the companies real quick. Story mode, can I go into it? Yeah, so uh, PINES is an organization that is focused on education technology and to reduce the reading achievement of children 
um, utilizes the same processes that educators use and is built into a mobile application. And so far has uh, raised funding from IBM and also from the Mozilla Gigabit Foundation. And so it doesn't seem like a lot of money across the board, 75 grand, but when most startups that are black owned are not, or Latino, brown, LGBT, they're not getting hundreds and millions of dollars like our counterparts. And so that's one of the things that we wanted to bring to the market to help. So education technology, this is an AI fintech company based out of Houston, Texas that reached out to us to help. They brought us $23,000 to build out a financial technology company similar to Acorns. We successfully built it. They got also a partnership from Capital One. They got an investment from Damon John. Um, this is slightly old. They're now doing a $550,000 round um, because of our help to get them there. Um, Ticket RX, um, this is local. They're local to here, another black founder. They got the digital sandbox grant and then we had to put another $25,000 on top of it to successfully build their app and get it to the market. Um, they've been working with the American Bar Association for the last year to change all of the legal rules and ethics of how lawyers can receive leads. Um, so that's a very interesting company that we've been playing around with for the last year. Um, Medu education startup to help kids make healthy eating decisions. Be Seated is a mobile application to bring a stylist or a barber to you. They want to disrupt the beauty world. They didn't have any money when we came to, when they came to us, so we invested in them. Um, we just loved the idea. We had some spare cash laying around. We wanted to help them out. <laughs> Adventure was our first company ever that we actually worked with. They received a $10,000 grant from the eScholars program in conjunction with Digital Sandbox. We helped them to build a video game for Crow's Coffee. They gave us roughly $7,500, and we turned out a video game for Android, iOS, Google Play, most of other systems. Basically, at the end of the day is these companies that we've helped out could not have created the technology or the businesses for the amount of money without having us as a team to provide all of the free resources and development to help them get a leg up ahead of their competition. That's it. Any fun questions? Oh, yeah, I have lots of questions. This is great. You guys, this is wonderful. I had no idea this was going on, and, you know, there's such, such a need. Um, where are you? <laughs> We're in the UMKC Block Venture Hub. It's okay. at 4328 Madison Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have a direct partnership with UMKC, but we occupy their entire third floor. I'm an entrepreneur in residence and a mentor for UMKC. I've been working with the Block School of Business for the last three and a half, four years, particularly with their eScholars program. And we've been, I won't say using them as practice, but it's finding and helping where we could add value. Sure. And that's mainly in the tech space and the product development where a lot of us just don't have expertise at. Right. So, don't. We do, and we're in the Country Club Bank building. Um, oh, okay, sure. That helps out a lot. Yeah, exactly. And how do people get a hold of you? Um, we really do a lot of social media advertisement, and oh, okay. we also have uh, physical flyers. We do go door to door to different locations, okay. and then we also um, have our, our web website as well. So we post our flyers in you know local businesses and also um, community centers as, as well. But just more of the, we've done a lot of grassroots, which has been really helpful, also visiting different neighborhood associations sure. to build that partnership as well. We also do uh, various, we've done three storytelling events for undeserved individuals to tell their story of their entrepreneurial journey. Okay. Um, that's been. We've done two events in one yes. workshop. Well, just, just like we just discussed in the earlier uh, presentation, I would love for some of your folks to come and tell us their story and how that, uh, Project United helped them. Um, and I would like, you have a website? It's, yeah, projectuk.org. Projectuk.org. So if people are looking to get a hold of you, uh, just um, look them up, projectuk.org. And also to apply for our education program, we're going to launch the first week of October. It's just the word apply in front of the website, okay. just apply. Just hit apply and you can uh, take a look at that application. Uh, I think this is so, so important because 
uh, this is business now. I mean, you have to have these skills in order to succeed. And uh, because you have to reach your customer base, regardless of who it is, and that's usually through social media. And so many of us don't have those skills and don't know where to go, don't know even how to start, uh, who's got the money, uh, who can teach me how to do this. I don't yet. You know, so this is wonderful, um, uh, particularly um, for our minority communities um, and women, um, because I have found that the tech field is mostly white males, and so it's um, it's kind of intimidating, um, even in Tech Week, to run around with, you know, you walk in the room and, and that's what you see. I mean, you have some diversity in there, but not a lot. So um, let's, let's get this going. Let's crank it up. <laughs> Whatever we can do to help, let us know. Okay, I was actually gonna say, um, before we get out of here, that was one of the main reasons behind me starting this company three years ago. Mm -hmm. Been in the tech field for 15 years. I worked in the corporate space for 10 years. I ne never was able to make it past supervisory level, mm -hmm. even after holding two different master's degrees, mm -hmm. four of them. Uh -huh. White women were my actual allies inside of the corporate world. Wherever I moved, I was able to move up. I eventually became a junior CTO to a company in the corporate space uh -huh. as we bonded together. It was the whole, I'm gonna champion you while you champion me inside of conversations. Right. And so we've held that value to date. So anytime that we can get on the back end of a board, an advisory yeah. board, and you actually have people there, that I feel is the only way that I can pick two or three individuals to get in front of them. So we have to intentionally champion people and communicate that. Absolutely. That's our and last question is, could you, do you have any advice of community organization that we should go talk to or be a part of? Oh, I'm sure we have a list. Um, Heather and I will work on that and uh, we'll, we'll set up a meeting with you and talk to you about who we think you, we can help with. And uh, I will do whatever you need to, to help promote you all and get you get you going and you know and whatever you need to do so um just find us rick can find us you, you can well we'll find you because we want to tell you who we think you can uh um uh, oh okay already on yeah, already out, okay already out there we're all connected yeah um <laughs> heather i'll let you talk a little bit well, I just think this is ex exactly what we need, and um, I think the key to everything successful and all the things we do in Kansas City is the partnerships and the communication. And when someone's doing something well, not to copy them, but to partner with them instead. And I like what you're doing. I think there's so many people out there who can connect with you. Um, this morning I was at Northland Coffee Connect. Obviously, my area, we, you know, you serve the whole city, but I serve most of the Northland. And there are definitely um, some underserved uh, people people in the Northland as well um, who need this help with the startup. There were 35 people at the Northland Coffee Connect this morning at iWorks in North Kansas City, and some of those people are just hungry to get started with their business, and they just, some of them need a little bit of a help. And so um, I would love to um, have those partnerships be connected with you all. I don't know if you're focusing on a specific area of the city or just a specific type of entrepreneur. Yeah, our, um, our area is mostly anything past inside of anything that's not really untouched so if it's not downtown not crossroads but anything that really hasn't been focused on so North Kansas City definitely KCK definitely just mm -hmm. those areas that you really don't talk about right yeah. in the news so absolutely so those are great ones but then the other thing that I don't know if you're doing are you reaching the younger generation before they get um, out of high school right now I'm working with the ship conference that's coming to town and my whole entire thing with them is I'm doing a hackathon that starts off at 10th grade and goes up to seniors and then after that is the collegiate side that's all college based. Our intent we've been exploring around with um, co-starters does have a program that is for high school. Um, one of the things with working with a lot of single parents, um, single dads and single moms that have kids, we've always thought about if we want to have them there we could technically take their companies and split it up amongst all of the kids and make them into case studies. And that's how the program was actually created with their curriculum. It takes one company, it breaks it down, it takes all of the kids or the parents' kids 
and they work on mommy and daddy's idea as a micro Great. level. So Perfect. they learn about it just at a small level. Yeah. Um, of course, that would require a little bit more resources. We're not capable of doing it right now. Either A, we need funding, or we need a partnership that could execute that and take that over for us. But that is, it's in our heads. Um, we really want to do it. Um, we really want to see that get done. I went through the CAPS program. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. I went through the Broadmoor program before it was CAPS. Um, CAPS was created, I graduated in 2004. CAPS was created, I think, 2007 from the Broadmoor program. Without going through that program, I could honestly say I wouldn't be in the spot or the position that I am now. I had 32 internships before I left high school. Um, oh, I had a chance to work at Cisco and Alexander Open Systems and different networking and programs. So those kids that are going through that have a complete leg up on any of their peers that are currently in the same situation in their community, and let alone if you happen to be brown or black or minority, you have a complete leg up on pretty much the nation, on the top 5% of your community in the entire United States. Right, exactly. I'm grateful for that program. So I would love to see inner city urban core be able to have access to something like that. Yes. But we, we do know that, like, for example, schools such as KCPS don't have Blue Valley caps. So there's partner organizations like Prep KC, which already have that pipeline, and partnering organizations that already have the, those students. And then one thing that would be an easier way is just to ask um, the teacher to allow that student to work with us on a part-time basis as, as needed instead of doing this you know, larger base. But so people already have the infrastructure like Prep KC. I'm glad you suggest that. That was my next question was about CAPS. Now, my, um, you know, we're in the Northland. I'm um, a supporter of Northland CAPS, and Northland CAPS spun off from Blue Valley CAPS, so now it's Northland. And every time um, I meet with my friends over at Cerner, I say, you need to start the Southland CAPS and capture the Hickman Mills, the center, the different school districts all around the, the new campus um, to do that. And uh, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of conversation. I don't know where they are exactly with that creation, but the CAPS folks, as well as I know the Cerner folks, are very um, dedicated to making something happen so that the kids in those school districts can get what the kids in the Northland, 13 school districts in the Northland, are getting through the CAPS program. Um, it's, it's an extraordinary program, and when you can put that on your resume, it makes a difference when your kids are out there meeting people and shaking hands and talking to people and, and asking the good questions and then seeing how business really works. It changes how they interact once they get out of school. You're right. And so um, I'm glad you're doing that, and I'm glad you did it, because look how successful you are. And you're an ex perfect um, example of what to do when you're in high school so you can be where you are today. Um, and, Will, um, I would love to sit and, and talk to you all about funding, too, where your funding's coming from, how we can help there and what we can do to promote the program, because I think this is just really a fantastic. Um, and I know my colleagues uh, who aren't here that are stuck in an airport meeting, uh, <laughs> uh, Councilman Jermaine Reed and uh, Councilwoman Alicia Kennedy would be all over this. So I don't know if you all know them. If you don't, you need to go meet them. Just make an appointment and, and go see them, because uh, they love this stuff. and I want to do anything and everything I can to help. So, uh, absolutely. so thank you both for coming down. This is great. And we're going to be there for you. And let's, let's, uh, let's kick this up a little bit, okay? No, oh, abso absolutely. We really appreciate your time and we'll look sure. forward to meeting sure. with you. Thank you so much for your thank presentation. Thank you so you much doing? for coming. And uh, um, we'll work to set some, uh, you can either work through Rick or you can just call our offices direct and, uh, We'll set some times up and, and kind of get down to it, okay? Is there a better day to come back? Well, I know it's a better day um, when you guys aren't doing the big airport conversation. Well, we're, we're hoping the airport uh, conversations are over this week. <laughs> but uh, maybe um, I'd give us a couple of weeks uh, to kind of get it wherever it needs to go. We all have an opinion on where it needs to go, but... <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank and you we'll both so much. Website. Yes, we'll Definitely. get it all up on the website and um, and start promoting. Thank you for so, allowing us to come down. Um, 
Rick, you know how to get a hold of everybody. Oh, you're on the oh, yeah. board. Well, you're on the board, it's on the so board. it's not a problem. <laughs> it's the digital age, so uh, what do we have? Absolutely. Twitter. We're all over the Twitter. Okay, and this was Quest Moffat and Rebecca Dove, and their um, um, project is Project United Knowledge, and um, I'm just, and it's projectuk.org. Yes. Thank you all so much for coming again. Okay, is there any other further business to come before the committee? I just have to um, something. Don't forget Tech Week, September 11th through 15th. Yes, Tech you, Week. You can uh, look, you can certainly uh, look on uh, their website and get all of the data. Mm -hmm. And what else you got? Anything else? Just as a reminder, that, um, Drew had said this, but this is part of the first night of Tech Week. Let's oh, go okay. to that. Um, Join us for our second annual Innovation Partnership Program demo, um, and this will be at Boulevard Brewing Company at um, Monday, September 11th, um, from 4.30 to 6. Okay, if that's all that we've got today, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.